Hello, everyone, and welcome to another information technology lesson. In our last lesson, we looked at how we create a blank database in Microsoft Office Access. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at creating a blank table, as well as identifying data types in Microsoft Office Access. This is the database that we worked on in our previous lesson, and we will be continuing using this database in this new lesson. However, I am going to briefly share with you the data that we're going to be using to create the table. For this lesson, we will be using this data. We will be creating a table called customer. And in that table, we're going to be putting in three fields, customer ID, last name, and first name. So let us get started. In our previous lesson, I stated that whenever you create a new Microsoft Office Access database, by default, it gives you a table called table one. Now, when we are creating a new table, you have the option of using this current table one and changing the structure, or you can close this table by right-clicking on the tab and selecting close, then going to the Create tab and clicking the Table Design icon. In this case, I'm going to use a Table Design icon to create the table. Once we click on the Table Design icon, it takes you to the design view of Tables in Access. Now, the first thing you're going to observe is that it says table one here at the tab. That's the name of the current name of the table. Then it gives you the opportunity to add the field names, the data types, and a brief description where it is necessary. If you recall, I did say we're going to create a table called customer. And customer has three fields. The first field is CID, which stands for customer ID. So I type CID in the first cell in the grid, and I use my tab key to go over. You could also click under data type using your mouse. Now, when I use a tab key to go over, the default data type that is given is short text. Now we use short text for those values that will be, or those fields which will be storing values that are text-based and even if the field has numbers in it or the values have numbers in them, as long as there's, you're not going to be performing any mathematical calculation on that data, you can set it to short text. And as long as it doesn't fall into the other categories of um, data types. So we have several different data types. In our lessons, we'll be focusing on short text, long text, number, date slash time, currency, auto number, yes slash no. We will be ignoring the remaining objects or data types, sorry, for the sake of the CXC syllabus. So I use my tab key to go over to the description column. And I'm going to type a description because CID can mean anything, but in this case, it means customer ID. So I type customer identification number, right? So CID stands for customer identification number. I'm going to press enter, that will take me to the next row and I'm going to add the next two fields. So the next field is last, which stands for last name. We're also going to be using short text for this one. And we're going to just explain that this is the customer's last name. Press enter again and type in first for the next field name, tab, short text, 
and we're going to say customers last name. Now, another reason why I use short text for first and last is that if you look in the field properties box below, you will notice that it says field size 255, which means that that field can hold up to 255 characters. Nobody's name exceeds 255 characters, so I can leave it at short text. In the case of the customer ID, our customer ID has four characters. And so we can use a short text, but what I will do is I will edit the field size for the customer ID and I'm going to set it to four. So I delete the four, the two, five, five and type in four. In so doing, it will limit the number of characters the user can enter and the user will not be able to make any mistakes by typing in say, for example, five characters or six characters. Once the user enters four characters, that is a maximum number of characters that will be allowed in that field. Now, in another lesson, I'm going to be looking at primary key, but just for the sake of creating this table, our primary keys are unique field names that are used to identify a row or a record in a table. And I will, as I said, I will talk about that in another lesson. Suffice to say that we create our primary keys or we set our primary keys in two ways. In this case, our primary key is a CID. We can right click in the gray box to the left of CID and select primary key, or we can highlight the CID row and under the design tab in the tools group, we find primary key, we can click on primary key. The next step, having added the field names and setting the data types and changing the field sizes and adding the description and all of that. The next step in creating the table is to save the table. And in doing so, we click on the save icon that is this little blue and white icon here. We click on it, it says save. It asks us to put in the table name and our table is called customer. So we type customer and we click okay. Now, once we have done that, we have successfully created the table. In our next lesson, we are going to be looking at populating a database table. And in order to do that, we would have to change the view to. So we come here where it says views. This In this here space here, we're looking at the design view. But for us to be able to add any data to the table, we must change a view to data sheet view by either dropping down the icon and select data sheet view or clicking the top part of the icon because it is already activated on the icon and it will take you to this window. But we will not be looking at populating the table in this lesson.